So finally, we have waited for this day and we have finally got official confirmation from Nikki that the Christmas units this year are going to be Lamilla and Mika. We also got their skills today and both of them are looking very, very good. But we're going to be talking about if they're worth your summons. Now, I know it's going to be very difficult for people to know if they want to summon or not, because obviously there is a potential pilgrim for New Year's. And already with all this stuff floating around online, you guys might already know who the character might be. I'm not sure if it really is going to be that specific character, but there is an image right now floating around of a pilgrim character. And a lot of people do believe that character will now be the New Year's pilgrim. Again, I don't know, but we're not here to talk about that character. We're here to talk about Ludmilla and Mika. So I do think Ludmilla and Mika are very good. I think Ludmilla is a machine gun version of Summer Enis. And I do think Mika has something new to the game, which is very, very cool to see. When we get those new characters but let's talk about their kits and if you should summon for them and why you should summon for them or why you should not summon for them so first off we have ludmilla right ludmilla obviously is an attacker burst three water cold ally um with the machine gun weapon right obviously she deals five 86% of attack is damage and deals 200% damage when attacking the core. Very, very nice character. Her first skill, the Queen's Gaze, activates when landing 60 normal attacks, affects the target, and then increases damage taken by a certain percentage for three seconds to that target. All right, very, very good. That's going to be very consistent since you can actually get 60 normal attacks in under three seconds. So essentially, it's going to be there all the time, right? And then after 60 normal attacks are landed, she's actually going to deal a certain percentage percentage of final attack as additional damage right and that's where that summer anise part comes in because summer anise does the same thing but hers is when she lands the last bullet also when landing 60 normal attacks she's going to reload 20 rounds of ammunition so essentially she has a built-in base young cube which is very very nice to see right that means you don't really have to give her that cube when building her her skill 2, Snowstorm, activates when hitting the core 60 times, affects the target, deals a certain percentage of final attack as additional damage, and then also at the beginning of a full burst, she's going to give herself a crit rate buff for 10 seconds of a certain percentage. Now, this character, just from her skill 1 and 2, is clearly going to dominate the game when it comes to bosses, right, with cores. I think she's going to dominate when it comes to bosses with cores. I believe somebody already did the calculation and says she is the hardest hitting character when it comes to fully investment, right? Um, That's what they're saying. At least we're going to have to wait and actually see. I'm not a math whiz. I hate school 1, so I'm not really into all that calculation stuff realistically, but hey if the people done it the people done it so we're gonna actually wait for testing but if you want to take that then by all means that can help you guys understand if you should summon or not as well right and her burst skill guiding lantern is on a 40 second cooldown but it gives herself a massive attack buff for 10 seconds and a massive reload speed buff for 20 seconds i just realized that the reload speed is for 20 seconds i just realized that I didn't know it was for 10 or 20 seconds. That's pretty good. But uh, yeah, that this character is a, a very good character. I think she's going to be a very good DPS, especially if you don't have one, right? Remember in the video where I said is meta needed? This character is going to be meta. She will be meta for a lot of people who don't have those DPS. If your only DPS right now is Red Hood, this character is going to be a very good second option for that DPS slot, right? So if you don't have good DPS units, you're probably going to want this Ludmilla because she might hit harder than most DPS units in the game, especially when it comes to bosses, right? Not to mention she is a machine gun character. So her landing 60 normal attacks is going to be very consistent you probably want to pull this character if you don't have a good dps if you do have a good dps your teams are probably not complete for solar raid and union raid the five teams that you need to have they're probably not complete so i would recommend to still summon for this character right i think lanilla is a must-have character realistically um but again, if you want to wait for testing, I would highly recommend to wait for testing. Or you can yourself can even go and test it in the shooting range, right? You don't have to always wait for the YouTubers if you don't want to. You can go ahead now and try the character out yourself with max stats in shooting range before you decide to summon or not, 
So if you do decide to summon, even if I'm telling you to summon and then she ends up being asked, that's nobody's fault but your own because again, you yourself could try her out before you decide to summon or you can wait for testing from YouTubers before you decide to summon. But on paper, she does look like a character worth summoning for. Just keep in mind, all these percentage are level 10 skills. So if she's not going to have these, she's not going to have these percentages at level five, which is the average build for an EK player. So again, wait for testing because most people are going to have this character at level five skills and that's why i say wait for testing from the youtubers because in shooting range although you will have the character max cord and all that stuff that's not a realistic build right in the shooting range they let you try the character out at core seven max dupes max skills max everything that's not a realistic setting for the character so wait for youtubers who are going to always do the average build of the unit at level five skills with the generic build that you guys are going to do and then decide to summon i will be live you guys could check that out on my channel but yes i will be live so yeah i'm gonna have the character so you can wait for me or any other youtuber so now we have Mika. We have already confirmed that Lunmilla, based on what we know right now, is definitely a must summon character. But Mika, let's check if Mika is on the same tier. So Mika is a supporter burst one iron code unit with the machine, the submachine gun weapon, right? She deals 11.7% of attack as damage. Um, I'm not sure if that's too good for a machine gun, but she's a supporter, so it doesn't really matter in my honest opinion. But her first skill, tidying up, activates when landing 120 normal attacks. Affects all allies, tidying up damage taken, decrease, stacks up to 10 times and lasts for 15 seconds. So essentially she gives a damage reduction buff to all allies for 15 seconds. And because it's only 120 normal attacks, that's going to be permanent after you get all 10 stacks activated and then activates when the caster's tidying up is fully stacked all allies will have their max ammo capacity increased by 40 percent continuously or a certain percentage i don't want to say 40 percent because again these are all level 10 skills so um keep that all in mind but the character herself is going to also get that max ammo capacity buff making it that she has more bullets than 120 of course making it more efficient for her to get this tidying up buff activated right so uh first skill is looking very very good already the first skill alone is a very very good skill and it's going to be very beneficial for a lot of the characters in the game i think if you're running this character with schoolgirls, for example um the damage reduction could be very good for someone like tia who is taunting giving herself you know the recovering her cover hp increasing her cover max hp and then with naga giving the shields and stuff like that having that additional defensive support right there with the damage reduction is going to be very very good not only that that damage reduction also will help out somebody like red hoods burst 2 that's what a lot of people don't realize the damage reduction is going to be permanent and that can help out red hood so much so 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 much with her burst 2 so I'm already liking this character skill one just because of those two facts. Skill two, Blessing Cannon. When landing 150 normal attacks, all allies stack count of a stackable buff will go up by one. That's very, very good for characters that stack, right? Um, by her having this mechanic, it's going to be easier for you to get all your stacks going. And depending on who is on your team, of course, but it's going to be very good to get all these stacks going and stuff like that very very good skill right there and then this is actually what people are kind of like going crazy about but when you enter the battle herself actually increases the gauge burst filling speed by 300 percent continuously it's probably a lesser percent when it's a lower level of course but that's still very very good for a submachine gun the thing is submachine gun characters don't have good burst generation so essentially by her giving herself an increase of that much percent of burst gauge filling speed is going to make her have pretty good burst generation and a lot of people do 1 million percent believe that she's going to be a very very good peer uh character for pvp right she's definitely good outside of pvp i know you guys are probably hearing she's a pvp unit no she's definitely good outside of pvp max ammo capacity and damage reduction everybody in the game can use that besides you know some of the characters in terms of max ammo capacity some of the characters like Dorothy, some of the characters like Summer and East, these characters can't really use the max ammo capacity, but everybody can use the damage reduction, right? Um, and then her burst skill, Snowfield Festival, actually removes one debuff on the enemy and then also increases their attack by a certain percentage of the caster's attack for five seconds. So again, you can run her with the schoolgirls and then 
you can enter Tia's burst skill and then her burst skill. Probably now you can use Red Hood's burst too for the that because she's gonna have damage reduction and then all that extra stuff. But overall, I do think Mika is a fantastic character as well. Um, this character, if you want me to be honest, I would definitely say to get one copy right 1 million percent she's not a character that needs max limit broken or anything else but you would probably regret it big time not being able to have this character because she's a limited character who's not going to come back until 2024 christmas right um so you probably out of these two characters specifically you definitely want to try your luck at getting one copy of mika Right, and I say that over Ludmilla because Ludmilla is just another good DPS if you want me to be realistic. So a mass majority of you guys are probably going to have enough DPSs in the game. There's nobody else in the game that can really do what Mika does. And I think that is very, very cool about her. So I would highly recommend to get one copy of Mika over anything else. But both of them essentially are a get a character right i would say get the character i would say get one copy of each you can go for as many dudes as you want for ludmilla but definitely try your absolute best to get one copy of mika um and then you can wait as well if you want to by the time these banners come to an end we should know who the new year's pilgrim is or who the new year's unit is and i mean not say new year's pilgrim but who the new year unit is so um yeah you guys can wait for that but overall i do think both of them are great characters i'm glad that limited characters started being good as the summer because we hadn't really had any good limited limited characters until the summer but now they're making limited characters good so definitely let me know if you guys are going to be summoning or not in my personal opinion as a youtuber it's yuxus i'm telling you guys to grab one copy of each but again you guys can test out these characters on your own and then see but the only problem is by testing them out you're not getting a realistic setting you might test out the character core 7 with full level 10 skills and see her do this much damage but you're not gonna have that build right so i that's why i say to wait for myself or any other youtuber who's actually going to be summoning for them just so that you guys can see what they look like at the average build but it's always up to you guys let me know what you guys think it's your boy Zuxus, and i'll see you guys in the next one i'm out peace